Hello, welcome. I'm your host, John Malone. Don't have any co-hosts because of spaces, crypto, finances, some old guy, who knows. So, introducing from Wilshire, currently in Norfolk, in the United Kingdom, Katie Mary. Hello, hello. How are you? Great. So, Katie, what are you doing right now? Right now, I am sitting in my rather small home office, uh, watching my cat, hoping he's not going to be a pain in the ass during the recording, but I can make no promises. Uh, could be worse, to be honest. So, don't worry about it. Cool, good. I'll uh, I'll try and keep him under control. He seems to be getting comfortable. He, he usually sees me put the headset on and thinks, right, now's the time I'm going to make a right pain in the bum out of myself because he knows that I basically, to get him to stop, I throw uh, dreamies yeah. all over the floor. So, yeah. Ah, uh, yes, of course. Cat crack. Yeah. So, what is it do you, that you do for a living? Uh, For a living, I work for our National Health Service at the moment. I'm part of the quality team for a branch of the community nurses. Um, But in my, I suppose you call it my side gig, (laughs) I I write horror stories. Oh, all right then. And what kind of horror stories do you kind of write? Cool. I enjoy writing horror that is not so much the blood guts violence kind of horror although that can be fun to particularly to watch in film format I tend to write more uh, supernatural or for want of a better word because it's far too big a word it makes me sound far more grandiose than I think I actually am Um, but existential horror (laughs) Ah, all right then yeah the the kind of stuff that leaves you thinking like was it real was it in somebody's head uh is the real horror like the fact that we're all slowly aging and dying in a vast empty universe that kind of nonsense like i said it sounds far more grandiose than it actually is ah all right then how long have you been writing for i started writing um when i was very very young but I started writing and actually sending it to places in the hope of it being published in my teens, early 20s kind of age. Ah, all right then. So we're doing it for longer than I'd like to admit. Okay, that's cool. And as working in the NHS, how long have you been doing that for? Uh, I've only worked in the NHS for a just over a year I'm actually um, in my second year now I started not this January got just gone but the one before before that I had a couple of years working in local government and then for that before then for nearly better part of a decade I was a legal executive ah very good which is uh, for anybody across the pond it's kind of like a lawyer all right then that's good to know Are there any books that you're about to write or planning on writing at the moment? Um, At the moment, I'm currently writing one that the working title is called The House. That may change because I need working titles to be able to work on projects. But most of my working titles are absolute garbage. Um, But yeah, so it's called The House at the moment. And the gist of it is the main character dies almost instantly. I think it's like the third chapter he uh, pops his clogs and the rest of the story is told from the same main character's perspective but after death him trying to effectively solve his own murder and figure out what happened and make sure his wife's okay and things like that. Ah, like no all right then. All right then. If you could live in a world that is nothing but gardens. Mm-hmm. Would you like to live in that world? I get hay fever, so maybe not? Okay. I think if you I'd, have hay fever, I'd, I'd be very sick. If yeah, I, I could live in that, that world with lots of antihistamines, then certainly. I love, I love my garden. All right, then. Sounds good. <laughs> if you were to start another business or a brand new business, what kind of business would that be? 
I would start a business probably probably a restaurant actually <laughs> I really like like quite a lot of people I, I enjoy good food and while I don't cook brilliantly myself I would hire somebody who could cook <laughs> and I'd like to run somewhere that's so um sort of served really interesting stuff maybe get like guest chefs in every couple of months kind of the way pubs around here do like guest ales I'd do guest guest chefs so you'd go in one month and it would be like Japanese cuisine and then you'd come in the next month and it would be Italian so you'd, you'd get to try loads of different stuff mm, fabulous if you had 500 acres of land what would you use it for Oh, that's easy. I'd do a nature preserve. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I'd uh, I'd rewild the whole thing. Big fences, obviously, to to keep what needs to be kept in in and keep what needs to be kept out out. But yeah, I'd rewild it and and I'd have uh, as much of the natural sort of flora and fauna there as possible. That would be very cool. Yes, I would love that. I've often uh, said that if my partner and I, if we won the lottery and we bought a big house with lots of land, we'd have a nice garden somewhere we could have a barbecue. But then the rest of the land would just sort of be not left to do as it wanted, but like maintained to do as what it it should do naturally. Okay, well, that answers that question then. There you go. Yes. If you could know the absolute and total truth to one question, what question would you ask? Oh, good Lord. Uh, there's a question. I wouldn't ask anything about myself. <laughs> I don't want to know the truth about that. I'm, I'm fine living in denial. Um, hmm. I suppose I would ask something along the lines of what is it that people need? I would try and find out what it is that people really needed. And then see if there was a way to go about sorting that out. Hmm. I'm not sure how I'd go about that because I'm not entirely certain what it would be. But I imagine if I had the ability to know the truth about a question, then I'd probably have something else up my sleeve as well. And I'd be able to do something productive with that information, hopefully. All right. Very good. What's your favorite season? Uh, Autumn. Definitely autumn. I very much like spring as well when everything's coming back after the winter. But autumn's my favourite because it's everything's starting to cool down after a nice hot summer and you get all the lovely vibrant colours and you get like that crisp, cool air. So when you go out for like a walk, everything feels really fresh. But it's kind of morbid still because everything's still kind of dying. So that makes me sound like a bit like a sociopath. But autumn. Yeah, of course. What is the best way to start the morning? In bed, 100%. In bed with no alarm going off. Cool. I hate the mornings when my alarm goes off and it's like, you have to get up and I'm going to wake you up by screaming at you. I like a good morning when I can uh, wake up naturally. I'm far more likely to wake up in a good mood if I've been able to wake up naturally on my own terms. Yep, me too. What could you give a 40-minute presentation on without any preparation? Ah, that's easy, but a little obscure. So I do apologize for this, but it would be Legacy of Kane, which is a video game series that came out uh, far far long, longer ago, again, than I'd like to admit. But I grew up playing that one. And it is a fantastic video game series, so I could... I could talk about that one easily for 40 minutes or longer. I could probably do about 40 days on that one with a no prep. Wow. Impressive. It's an obsession. (laughs) I can see that. (laughs) What is the most comfortable shoes you own? Probably my brogues. They're really, really padded. (laughs) They've got like arch support and everything there. They're like walking on little clouds and they look really smart as well. So I like them a lot. Ah, very good. What was the last thing you've asked ChatGPT? I confess I've not used ChatGPT yet. 
Oh, really? Yeah, I've actually not got round to it. I've read a lot about it and I've watched a few YouTube videos where people are talking about it, but I've not actually used it myself yet. But if I were to use it, I'd be interested in seeing if it could write a good D&D &D session, like a Dungeons and Dragons session. Sorry, you may have picked up on this already, but I'm a big nerd. Um, so yeah, yes. I'd, I'd probably use it to to see if I could get it to, to do some DMing for me. Fabulous. What is the one thing you can't live without? My phone, 100%, no contest. <laughs> My, my phone, definitely. It's got everything on it that I need to survive. <laughs> um, I've often called myself an Ood, which, again, if you're not familiar with Doctor Who, you might not even have a clue what I'm on about. They're an alien species with at least two brains, one in their head and the other one they literally hold in their hand, which my phone held in my hand is like my second brain. It reminds me where I've got to be, what I've got to do. I have an atrocious memory, probably because I use my phone as my memory far too often. But yeah, oh. definitely my phone. I go to sleep listening to podcasts on my phone, so I can't sleep without the blooming thing. I wake up in the morning with an alarm on my phone. As I've just said, my phone tells me what I have to do each day. So yeah, my phone's basically my boss. Yes, we're all attached to our technology these days. A little bit, a little bit. Oh, yes. Well, maybe more than a little bit, but yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm under-exaggerating. <laughs> if there was a song for every time you entered the room, what song would that be? That would be Papaya by Baby Metal. Um, Baby Metal is a metal band but the singers are very sweet, adorable little Japanese girls. And while you've got all this big, heavy music going on in the background, you have these very adorable young ladies singing about, um, for Papaya, it's, they're singing about how much they enjoy going to festivals and seeing cute boys and eating papayas. So if you listen to it blind, for want of a better phrase, you're hearing what's quite an angry sounding song with some very cute vocalists. But if you know what it is they're singing about, it's frankly adorable. And I love the contrast. I like the fact that I don't take myself very seriously at all. Um, but on the surface, if you didn't know me and you just saw me walking in the street, you'd probably think I took myself far too seriously. And uh, yeah, I like that. I do, I do that in a lot of things I often by things that look very serious on the surface, but if you look a little bit closer, they're actually very silly. Ah, uh, yes, so I do like... Baby Metal sums that up quite well. All right, then. Yeah, I do like that kind of thing. What has taken you the longest to get good or decent at? Oh, that one's easy. That's, uh, that's definitely got to be writing. Again, I've been writing for a very long time, I like to think I'm good at it. I can always be better. I think even if you're an amazing writer, you can always, always be better. And that's one of the things I like most about it is that there's always room to grow with it. You're never going to hit the ceiling with it. It's, it's something you can always improve at. But yeah, I think I've, uh, through many, many years of horrible trial and error, I've finally managed to hit a point where I think I'm, I'm, I'm all right now. I'm good enough, but yes definitely still getting better all right then what's the best thing you bought off amazon probably my kindle i love my kindle it's very small and compact and yet holds millions and millions of books so it's lovely i love my kindle ah very good i like the fact that you can carry a library around in your pocket it's great Oh, yes. It's uh, quite convenient. Very much so. It doesn't quite replace real books, for want of a better phrase. I really like, I still go into bookshops and buy regular, well, buy regular books, buy real paper books on the regular. Um, there's something about holding a book and the smell. Kindles can't, can't do, they can't replace that. But at the same time, there's uh no comparison for being able to carry that much in that smaller, compact and lightweight 
way. Like you can go on holiday and take your entire book collection with you if you want. It's fantastic. Fabulous. Is there an app you hate, but you use it anyway? Fitbit. <laughs> 100% my Fitbit app. I hate it, but I use it anyway because it yells at me and tells me to get off my bum and go and do some more steps. It tells me how many calories I've eaten. All the things I don't like to be told or hear, but I know that it's for my own well-being, so I still use it. And I still need to be told this horrible information. Ah, uh, yes. That makes sense. So I really don't like exercising. I do it because I don't want to die, but... Fair enough. I hate doing it. I don't want to die either, but no. uh, got to do something. This is it. I'm one of them people you see in the gym and their face is like absolutely tripping them as I'm trying to listen to like a good audio book on my iPod or something. And uh, I'm sitting there hating every moment, but I'm there anyway. Oh, yes, of course. If you had to bury a treasure chest, where would you where would you hide it? Probably somewhere high. I would go up maybe Snowdon in Wales and hide it up there because it's oh. a pain in the ass to get to. <laughs> and if I wanted to keep something secret enough that I was going to the trouble of burying it, I'm definitely going to go to the trouble of making sure that the burial spot is hard to find. So yeah, at the top of a hill. You know, Big that hill. Actually makes, yeah, that makes a lot of sense because uh, if you hide it somewhere that's hard to reach, then it's completely it. out of mind. I never understood when you see these uh, pirate cartoons and stuff and their boat lands um, or moors up a little way off and then they find the buried treasure on the stinking beach. It's like, did you just run out of motivation? Could you not think of somewhere slightly better than the blooming beach to hide your treasure chest? And yes, I know it's a children's cartoon or whatever, but still, try harder, pirates. Go yeah, up a hill. So, yes, so stupid. <laughs> You land on a beach, you go all across the island, you go back to the beach again and just bury it there. That's it's that's so stupid. It's bonkers, man. It's it's insane. <laughs> no, don't bury it on the bloody beach. <laughs> Put it somewhere decent. Put it like on top of a hill under a really big boulder. Or even better, go up a hill and find a crevasse. Put it there. Ha ha. Find it then. Or babe, maybe bury it on a site of a volcano where the yeah. people will never dare even go. No, because it's super dangerous. <laughs> you might lose a few people in the burying operation, or you could be even smarter and put it on the side of a volcano and just bloody run and hope the lava does the job for you. Yes, that's an even better idea. See, then you don't even have to bury it. We have We have solved the issue of pirate treasure. Oh, yes. If you could create your own job title... What would it be? Gosh, my own job title. Hmm. I assume if I can create my own job title, I can create my own job. I would probably create the job of cat petter. I would like to be paid a living wage to pet cats because that would be nice. And I like cats. Oh, yes. Don't we all? That and the fact that I do have two of them running around the house at the moment, so I could work from home. Ah, all right then. Would you ever try space tourism? Gosh, I really like horror. So the idea of space tourism, I'm thinking like alien and whatnot. So... From that perspective, probably no. Things never go well in space. They always go horribly, hideously, hopelessly wrong, especially if there's some kind of android on there deliberately trying to bugger things up. So, yeah, probably not. I'd, I'd okay. stay here and, and let things get buggered up here. Fair enough. Just enjoy what you have and <laughs> not worry about things that doesn't involve you. This is it. <laughs> I'll keep myself to myself. Thank you very much. Yes. Indeed. That, and I'm a nervous flyer, so goodness knows what I'd be like on an actual spaceship. Ah, uh, yes, of course. If someone wrote a book about you, what do you think its title would be? It would probably be something along the lines of don't take yourself too seriously, because it's incredibly boring. So, yeah, I'd... Uh... The girl, who, like, instead of the girl with the dragon tattoo, the girl who didn't take herself seriously. That, that'll do. 
that'll work for my uh, my, my biography. Ah, uh, yes, of course. What's a common misconception people have about you? Probably confidence. I keep getting told by people that I come across as very confident. Uh, inside, I'm I'm very much not <laughs> confident. I see myself as incredibly awkward and fumbling. And all of this illusion of confidence is just that. It's it's a hideous lie. It's it's not true at all. Ah, all right then. What's something you tried that you didn't think you would like, but you end up liking it? Couscous. I was uh, I was made to try couscous. Uh, I say recently, but it was in like the last year or so, and I didn't expect to like it. I. I didn't like the look of it particularly. I didn't like the smell. And uh, then I tried it and now I have couscous quite regularly because it was surprisingly nice. It's uh, Ah, especially nice if you cook it in stock because it absorbs all the water you cook it in. So you get the uh, stock flavor there. It's very Ah, versatile. Sweet. What What should they teach in high school? But they just don't. Uh, That would be life skills. Uh, Life skills such as how to change a car tire. I still don't know how to bloody do that. How to do taxes if you're self-employed. How to fix a button, change a light bulb, things things like that. Really like real life practical skills that you might not have been taught for a variety of reasons. Uh, I remember when I was at university and I went round a friend's house and my friend and his housemates had been sitting in the dark for several days at this point. And it turned out that they'd gone round and checked their light bulbs or their light bulbs were fine, but they just, they didn't know why their lights weren't coming on. And it turns out a fuse had blown. And I knew this, my, my dad was good enough to teach me these things when I was younger, that when the lights go off all of a sudden, it's usually because he tripped a fuse. And he taught me how to change them, taught me how to like rewire plugs, all these useful little tidbits of information. And I got to be hero of the day that day when I went in and went under the stairs and flicked the fuse and all their lights magically came back on. I got to be the light wizard. Oh, all right. So I, I wish we taught more practical skills in school. Yes, I agree. But on that subject, I think there is actually a YouTube channel. Um, I think it's called like Dad, How Do I? And this guy, is, uh, he shows you how to do all sorts of useful, practical bits and pieces. There's uh, also a book called How to Walk in High Heels, which is the same sort of thing, but in book form. And it is marketed at women, but it is an incredibly useful book. It taught me a lot. Fabulous. So Yeah. If you didn't get taught that stuff in school, buy that book or watch that YouTube channel. It's really good. Oh, yes, it sure is. If you could live anywhere in the world, where would it be? At somewhere cold. I would maybe live in uh, Norway or one of the Scandinavian countries if I spoke the language, which I don't. Language is not a skill set I have. Um, but I would definitely live somewhere with a cold climate. I am i don't do well in heat. I'm a redhead and I burn if the sun so much as uh, peeks its head out for five seconds I go tomato red and blister usually it's it's horrible um so yeah I definitely live somewhere cold and I tend to really enjoy the nature in colder climates I love walking through forests I like walking through snow I don't like the snow we get in England though because it's not really snow it's slush and then it's slushed, it gets rained on, and then the rain freezes. So it's just horrible, tricky ice all the time. I like really good crunchy snow. So yeah, definitely yes. somewhere cold. Yeah, I would I would like to live in Scandinavia as well. It's well, great. Prefer- yeah, preferably in like in the mountain valley, so I could like build a massive uh, house along the sides of the valleys and just have my very wide open inner courtyard with flower pots and uh, grass and whatever. See, that would be so cool. And if you built it on a mountainside, when the 
ice at the top of the mountain melted, you could use that to generate power because that's that's what a lot of these uh, places actually do. We were in Norway a few years ago and they were we were um, we did a tour and they were telling us all about how when the ice off the mountain run down, they use it to generate a lot of their electricity. So you'd be you'd be well set for stuff like that. It's and it's always so picturesque as well. Like you can get some fantastic places. I think I'd I'd like to live somewhere called Olden if I could. That was such a nice little town. Yeah. Absolutely gorgeous. Oh yes. Where would you see yourself twenty years from now? Gosh, twenty years from now, so I'd be in my late fifties. I would like to be retired. Um, I would very much like to be making my living from writing at that point I uh, I know you don't get into this kind of business if you want to basically make enough money to live off permanently um, but I would like to have been able to go down to part-time hours and then maybe hit early retirement and be able to concentrate full-time on uh, my craft for want of a better phrase and to be living in a reasonable sized house on the edge of one of the local villages. I live in the center of a town at the moment and it's very, very busy all the time. I, I do definitely want to live in a much smaller village with like a wee local pub where I can spend probably more of my time than I should. But yeah, that would be super cool. Being yeah. able to just be a little writer, living in my little village house, living in my pub. <laughs> oh, yes, absolutely. Which recent news story have you found most interesting? Gosh, recently, um, we've been having a story kind of break over here. There was a a riot in Wales. I think it was, uh, I can't remember off the top of my head. I'm, I'm terrible for the news, but there was a wee riot in Wales. I think it might have been Cardiff. There was a police chase and some young lads died uh, during the course of the chase. There's not a lot of information about it now. There's a, We don't actually know what happened, but they think there was some misinformation came out afterwards and people just snapped. And so I'm sort of watching that one to see what on earth happened. So it's, it's very interesting, but there's there's not a lot of information at the moment. But yeah, the, the BBC app has been beeping every few hours with uh, updates in inverted commas about what's been going on. Yeah. To be honest, if there is something that there isn't much about, that there is a reason why not much is being said about it. Yeah, like, this is where my brain is going. Yes. You never know what, what kind of narrative or what perspective people have on certain things unless there's certain information spoon fed to them Mm -hmm. you would never know exactly what the situation is going on unless you actually speak with the people literally involved in the situation rather than people who were just there they saw it and they're writing their opinion on it there's there's much more you can get from asking people that were literally involved rather Mm. than people who just witness it and just giving out their own opinion this is it. I mean, I used to we used to find this in my uh, my one of my previous jobs a while ago when I was uh, doing negligence and accident claims. Uh, we'd find that, like particularly for road traffic accidents, the would sorry there would be about five or six different people who saw what happened, and every single one of them would tell you something different, and they'd all witness the same accident but from slightly different perspectives. And they'd already decided themselves, like subconsciously, I don't think people did it deliberately, but they'd already picked like who was the villain in their mindset. And once they'd picked that, then what had happened changed depending on their narrative. And it's it was very interesting, very frustrating trying to get to the bottom of what actually blooming happened. But, But it's it's very interesting the way we do it from like a psychology standpoint. It's. It's definitely interesting. Oh, yes. The mind boggles. It really does. It really does. Oh, yeah. Like, I am, I must admit, I am morbidly curious to see what on earth happened in Wales at the weekend. Because uh, there are CCTV cameras absolutely everywhere. 
in at least where I am, you you can't throw a stone without hitting a camera. So there's no way that this wasn't seen, and there's got to be a reason why so little information is available. Exactly. It's, it's peculiar. So yeah, I'm morbidly curious about that one. Yeah, there's 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 always something that people are just leaving out because it would not if it would not fit in with the mindset of the of the general public. People wouldn't believe it. They're just mm. going along with what people belief they would find convincing rather than what's actually true yes yeah certainly oh yes of course and that is all we have for this episode it was great having you on katie talking about your recent works as an author working for the nhs and a lot of other things it's been great it's been lovely thank you for having me you're welcome and until next time stay opinionated